Up next, it's our press review with Deeptika Lurong. The humanitarian situation in Gaza is dominating the international press this Friday. It follows calls from the International Court of Justice to Israel to immediately enable the provision of aid to the enclave. Deepti is here in studio with us now. Deepti, what is the latest? What are the papers saying about that story? Yeah, it's uh, really dominating the French, uh, the papers, the international papers this Friday, Sharon. Famine is settling in. That's what The Guardian says on its front page. The UN court urge, uh, ordering Israel to unblock Gaza aid uh, to allow unimpeded access of uh, food supplies into Gaza. The British Daily noting that it is a li legally binding order uh, that is also a significant legal rebu rebuke to Israel's claim that it is not blocking aid deliveries into the besieged enclave. You'll see a similar headline from Al-Quds Al-Arabi, which is a pan-Arab paper uh, uh, based in London. This paper also headlining on the International Court of Justice's uh, ruling uh, against Israel. Similar headlines also from Arab News, the Saudi paper, the World Court ordering Israel to halt Gaza famine as fighting flares. Uh, there's an interesting article in um, uh, in Time magazine, uh, which uh, really excoriates the, quote, dangerous, slow developing and woefully inefficient famine mitigation measures like airdrops. The writer is saying that Israel's reason to act should not be because the ICJ mandates it, but rather out of a moral responsibility to avert a preventable human catastrophe. Staying in the Middle East for our next story, Deep Tea Saudi Arabia is to have its first ever contestant representing the country at the Miss Universe contest. Yeah, that Miss Universe beauty pageant will be taking place in Mexico later this year, Sharon. Uh, but this woman is making the front page of Lorient Le Jour, the Lebanese French language paper here. Uh, just She's got a little piece of uh, new front page real estate there. Her name is uh, uh, Rumi Al-Katani. She's a 27-year-old uh, model and content creator from Riyadh, uh, Saudi Arabia. She'll be representing the kingdom at the Miss Universe beauty pageant contest in Mexico later this year. She speaks French and English in addition to her native Arabic. She also uh, graduated in dentistry. The Saudi Crown Prince, of course, has been behind several initiatives that he says aims to show a more modern face of Saudi Arabia, like allowing women to drive, allowing women to attend sporting events, and even allowing women to obtain passports uh, without a male guardian. Uh, critics, though, say it's just a smokescreen to draw attention from the country's very serious human rights violations. Returning to Europe next, Deep Team, the Czech government says a pro-Russia Prague-based website has been paying hard-right EU politicians to turn public opinion against Ukraine. Tell us about that. It's in the Times of London today, uh, Sharon. Uh, it's uh, Voice of Europe. That's the media that uh, this uh, article refers to. So the Czech government says Voice of Europe, which is a Czech-based um, uh, Czech based media website and uh, is backed by two pro-Kremlin Ukrainian politicians. And these politicians have been influencing European politics in favor of Russia, notably Viktor Medvedchuk and Artem Marchevsky, two people who are very close to Vladimir Putin. Uh, they've been covertly, allegedly covertly, paying hard-right politicians in Europe, in France, in Germany, for instance, uh, to turn public opinion against supporting Ukraine. In particular, Germany's AFD party is uh, accused of having received large sums of cash. Uh, just weeks before EU elections, these allegations are, of course, very serious and point uh, to a uh, just to the depths, uh, if proven, it points to just how deep the Russian disinformation campaign goes here in Europe. On a much lighter note then, Deep Tea Beyonce has released a new album, her eighth studio record, Cowboy Carter. It's described as an exploration of the boundaries of country music. What's the reaction been? Well, uh, muted, I think, would be the best way to sum it up, and it's not to her uh, discredit, uh, really. Uh, Cowboy Carter explores and pushes the boundaries of what country music is, and in particular, who can make country music, and that's why this album has been um, somewhat controversial. Uh, the Telegraph recounting, for instance, how a fan asked a small country music radio station in the US to play one of uh, Beyonce's songs from this album, because she released a few songs ahead of the album release. Uh, 
uh, that person was uh, told that uh, Beyonce's music is not country music and so the radio station would not be playing it. The email exchange was posted online and drew a lot of criticism. Uh, so the radio station had to give in. But it is revelatory of how many people in the country world see Beyonce, um, a 32 time Grammy Award winning artist is simply, you know, frivolous, frivolously waking up and deciding to go country when, of course, this shift to country music is far deeper and far more uh, ref uh, thought out than, uh, than, they, uh, than they portray it. Um, it also points to the sort of whitewashing of black musicians' contribution to country music. So this album uh, really uh, revealing a lot of deep layers when it comes to music and stereotypes. And we're staying with music for our final story. And if you ever have the feeling that song lyrics have become a little simple, even lazy in recent times, you're not alone. A new study, Deep Tea, showing that that is actually indeed the case. Yeah, this uh, article from The Guardian uh, tells us that song lyrics are getting uh, more basic and it is a reflection of our times. That's the conclusion from this new European study which parsed through 12,000 English language songs across all genres from the 80s up to the 2000s. What they found was that lyrics have become more repetitive, and positive, joyful lyrics have given way to angry, sad, aggressive lyrics and also selfish lyrics. The researchers noting that the use of the words me and mine were uh, very much more recurrent in later music. It is in a way a reflection of our modern times. Uh, they also are reminding us that Bob Dylan won a Nobel Prize in Literature, uh, but it seems like today's musicians might be far, far, far away from that kind of accolade. Deep T, thank you so much for that press review. That's Deep T, Laurent, joining us there.